to be in studio with Dr. Hani Albanna, who is the founder of Islamic Relief Worldwide. He has led the team for many, many years and is currently the chairman of the World Humanitarian Forum, which is based in the United Kingdom. Dr. Hani, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, Dr. Hani, in fact, uh, just looking at your profile, and uh, we have spoken uh, previously and we've looked at Islamic Relief uh, over the years, uh, talking a lot about the work, about the humanitarian work. And the key issue here, the key issue here is we are living in very, very difficult times. And uh, it is a crucial time as far as being a humanitarian is concerned. And more importantly, humanitarian work that is needed now and it's needed more now than ever before. That's right. Yeah. So at the moment, unfortunately, there's a lot of humanitarian crisis because of the conflicts, because of the climate changes, because of the bad governance in certain countries, and because of the lack of resources or um, what you call it, corruption, in, in certain countries, particularly in Africa. Africa is an extremely wealthy continent but it is the poorest nation live in Africa. With all this, we need a lot of humanitarian response, as well as a lot of social response, as well as a lot of developmental response. What we are good at as uh, so-called Muslim-led charities is the humanitarian response, which is very emotional, short-lived, and does not build the community, does not build society, does not deal with the root causes of the problem. And this is our problem, actually, if we talk about challenges. You have on one side tens of millions of people actually displaced or refugees, and you have organizations that actually they are very good in the handout. Handout is half an hour, is an hour, is a day, and the food is over, and what's next? So this is the problem that we are facing nowadays from most of the so-called Muslim-led charities. Yes, and I think uh, the critical question, and you've uh, articulated quite a few issues here, and you've raised a number of points, and the critical issue is capacity. Developing capacity in the field of humanitarian work, but also at the end of the day, it is about value the value that you get out of that capacity that you build? Unfortunately, to be very honest, if you want me to be very frank, I'll have to put it on the, That's right. on the table. We don't spend money in capacity building. We don't spend a lot of money or a minimum money on training our staff. We don't spend money from our budget on building local leadership from the local community that were claimed that we are serving. We don't. We only spend most of our money in buying food to start with or doing another project which in a building. And astonishingly enough, we say to the people that there is no admin fee. All the money will go straight. You cannot do that by actually not investing in your stuff if I have a less qualified staff, they could be dedicated, they could be pious, they could be good, but they are unable to understand the social fabric of the society you are helping and unable to deliver the goods and to see how can they build the local community. Admin cost is on the table by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one of the eight categories of spending the cat onto it. No one can claim zero admin cost, even from the cat. This is number one. Number two, an organization, an organization without actually proper training program is a dead meat. No matter how much is inflated by the amount of money that the public are giving to them, it's a dead meat. One thing which we need to understand, brother here and your viewer to understand, are we measuring the impact of what we do in the community every year by any project or just we go to build 
a school and leave it just to go to build an orphanage and leave it just to go to build a village or houses for the people and leave it what is the impact of what we do on the life of the people that we claim that we are helping this is another thing measuring the impact we talk about capacity building talk about training talk about empowerment of the local community talk about measuring the impact another point how far we have young men and young women in our organization do we involve young men and young women in our organization because they constitute more than 60 to 70 to 80 percent because this kind of governance which lets somebody like myself to stay in the board of trustee or the board of management forever okay and they don't allow the young people to come with their new, dynamic, diverse ideas to my organization. All these challenges, which you let it on one side, we have this problem. On another side, we have the displacement, the refugees, the climate change, and all the corruption in, all, in most of the countries that we claim that we are working in. Yes. In fact, uh, Dr. Hani, I like what you're saying, and uh, particularly when we talk about uh, humanitarian activism. Mm -hmm. Because uh, to be, what does it take? For, okay, perhaps I should ask you that question. What does it take for a person to be a humanitarian activist? You talk about advocacy now. Yes. Advocacy, unfortunately, is not on the agenda of most of the Muslim charities. I'm just trying to be very frank. Allah mentioned advocacy in Surah Al-Ma'un. The word Yahud does not advocate for the need of the needy. Does not advocate for the need of the needy. If Allah mentioned advocacy in Surah Al-Ma'un and Surah Al-Fajr long time ago, 1400 years ago, who are you not to use some money of what you raise to advocate for the need of the needy. Advocacy is something that we need to do to tell the government, this is our opinion in this locality. To, talk, to tell the donor, who actually, this is what we need, not what you want. Because quite often we are driven by the donor's culture, not by the needs of the local community. And in this case, I tell you, in Syria, as a, pro, as a huge problem, and you know the problem in Syria, donors come and still giving the hand out because they would like just to give a hand out. Okay? The Syrians don't want it. Do you know what happened? This is a food box, food pack. They go to the market, sell it with 20% or 30% of the actual value of mm -hmm. the food in it because they don't want it right. and they kept telling the donors we don't need it empower us train us build the market for us build the schools and proper schooling not just schooling which just treat the, the, the literacy level this is what actually the people in different parts of the world need from you now need you to advocate for this i tell you another point uh, brother is the research and development on the agenda of our so-called humanitarian Muslim-led charities or not? Hmm. And tell me, come and challenge me, and tell me how much each organization is spending out of her budget on research and development. How on earth I can go to an area without having a proper needs assessment and bring a research paper to the government, tell my government, here is the research, please listen to me, because this is facts, it's not fiction. Yes, and I suppose this is what this whole uh, local leadership and governance workshop is all about, because uh, like we said, is when we're talking about capacity building, it is all encompassing, and these are the most critical issues. You know, you speak about research and development and, uh, you know, involving new blood, being innovative, uh, times have changed, challenges have changed as well, and I suppose all of that is incorporated in terms of, uh, uh, of, of workshops. Another one, succession plan. Now, if you talk about somebody like me, I'm nearly 69 next month. Do I have to be a chairman forever? No. Do I have to be a president forever? Oh, what is the succession plan for me to move 
and get what's your name sister in the room just say Shazia. Name. Shazia come next to me want to promote you to become a board member whether she is Shazia or Mahmoud or Ali or Muhammad this mindset at the back of the mind of the people who claim that they are the guardian of the charity work so that we cannot leave because the organization will lose their value their physical credibility it's us it's not you it's the community problem is brother and sister Shazia in the room you're not in the camera but you are in the room she's doing a lot of good work behind the camera okay problem is that we still believe that my organization is belongs to my organization right not to the community mm. who gives you the money for the charity it's the community mm. who stands behind you it's not your mosque it's the community so when you receive the money of the community at large you have to respect and to respond to the needs of the community at large not only to your jama'a or to your group or to your political party yes now uh, i see we have got a dinner also uh, that is on tonight and uh, this is the gala dinner and I suppose that is one of the reasons why you are here and uh, to eat, we're huh? also led to believe <laughs> to eat but also our uh, Minister of International Relations is going to be there Dr. Naledi Pandor is going to be uh, a speaker the main speaker that's right yeah the keynote speaker yeah right I'm just attending the dinner to be with you on uh, my first visit to South Africa was 1995 let me tell you a small story to tell you how bad I was until the chairman and the president stand up and mention your mistakes 1995 i was uh, the boss of islamic leaf worldwide and i was overspending because we did not have a good financial department so we overspend the money because of my actually dictatorship style so we went to a financial crisis because of you because of me i'm just telling the people because of me so that's why I came to South Africa in 1995 to raise funds from here. I was with the Islamic Medical Association of South Africa. I was with the African Muslim Agency. Remember uh, the late Farid Shanura, <laughs> Rahmatullah Ali. Yeah. And I went to Durban, Cape Town. I want money because khalas, I did the mistake. I went to Latin America. I went to Malaysia. I went to others. But we learned from my mistake to build a very strong finance department account department and what they call the third one good uh, what uh, uh, it is uh, uh, what do you call it uh, another department with quite quality control yes okay department okay to enable us to come from this mistake which has been done by whom the man which you are talking about him that he is he is this he is was very bad because he did not know what he's doing maybe 20 25 years ago so for the chairman and the president they have to admit that they have done mistakes and they can step down or they can actually correct their mistakes none of us can live without having a mistake done in his life but he or she should go back and say I'm sorry my apology please uh, uh, forgive me let us work together to come out of the mess that I I I and the viewers can you see me the viewers huh can they see me yes uh, this one uh, thank you sister Shazia can you see me I was the one who made the mistakes which could have led Islamic Leaf to be closed down in 1995 but alhamdulillah we we'll learn from our mistakes and Islamic Leaf is what it has what it is nowadays yes now uh Obviously, time is of the essence, Dr. Hadi. Just, uh, you know, we've got many uh, humanitarian organizations. We've got many relief organizations, not only in South Africa, but throughout the entire world. And we've seen a huge increase as the crisis actually grows. And we just see more and more springing up all the time. And uh, just what sort of advice, what sort of advice would you give to relief organizations that are operating at this point in time? My advice is the lot of uh, what do you call them uh, thugs and bad guys coming to the field for the image for fundraising i'm just trying to be very frank we have to build a regulatory body we have to advise our government to build regulatory body to regulate 
the charitable activity. In UK, we have what we call charity commission. Okay? They regulate. They have the power to remove the board of trustees if there's any complaint. Totally, and there's quite a few cases mentioned in UK over the last three years. Some of them are Muslims, unfortunately. The whole board of trustees have been removed because of what mistakes they have done. So we need to have a strong regulatory body to deal with this. Number two is we need to start to make a platform to connect together. Like in UK, we have something called Muslim Charities Forum, where the Muslim charities sitting together, and instead of competing and fighting and backstabbing one another, to talk to one another. Alhamdulillah, it is Muslim Hands, Muslim Aid, Islamic Leaf, Human Appeal, and, and, and even a World Federation of Shia or Ethna uh, Ashraya is there, and the Islamic Help, and, and many, many, okay? We need to sit down together in South Africa. To be very honest, South Africa cannot afford lack of coordination, lack of communication, lack of partnership to be built between the organization themselves uh, horizontally, uh, between the organization and the community vertically, top down and bottom up with the government and diagonally or whatever you call it with other bodies because we need to stand against the donor who would like to come and change our culture. No way. Our value. No way. We cannot do this when we do not communicate, we do not connect and do not build partnership. So nowadays, brother and sister in the room, partnership is like the kalima. The kalima hmm. in this. I'm not joking. I'm not coming to fundraise from you. Don't need your money. I need your brain. I need your heart. I need your vision. I need your future and your children. We don't want money. Money is the least, but it's important. What we need is to sit down together and talk about our differences. Sit down together and talk about our work. You know what, brother and sister Shazia? I make you famous today. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Okay. The money in the organization does not belong to you. And to you. The knowledge in the organization does not belong to you. It's community. The data in the organization does not belong to the organization. It is community. That's why it's public. This is something we need to learn as organization. Not because I am the founder, I should have I should be worshipped by the community. No way. Nobody worshiped Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nobody worship Musa alayhi salam. Nobody, people worship Isa. There's something up to them. But in our, as a Muslim, we don't worship Isa. We don't worship Ibrahim. We worship Allah. So the founder or the president or the chairman is somebody who should be questioned all the time and most of the time. And if he or she is doing bad, peace be upon you. Your term is over. Succession plan. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And just, uh, you know, finally, uh, the one point that you mentioned, and I think this is very, very important in terms of accountability. That's it. And I think for me that is absolutely critical because when you talk about regulatory bodies to regulate, and I think this is where sometimes, sometimes there are huge question marks that hang over accountability. That's right. Who are we accountable to? I tell you something, brother, from, my, from how I learned. We are accountable to the little kid with running nose, does not wear shoes in his, his, his legs, dirty clothes, sticky eyes, and is homeless. You know why? Because I take his money to pay my salary, to buy my food, to pay for my children's education, to live in a very nice house, and he is still living in a tent. I should be accountable to this young child who is drowning in the Mediterranean and his father and mother crossing to find a new way of life because of the corruption in Africa or in Afghanistan and other places. I should be accountable to this woman who has been raped systematically in Bosnia or in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I should be accountable to any member of my community that I claim that I am, I am helping them. I am championing them. Championship is in the field, not in the office. Championship is not a title. 
Championship is a service delivery to the people that they need my service and they need to deliver it because this is their duty on me. This is accountable accountable to those before coming to be accountable to the donor, accountable to the government, accountable to other bodies. So the first step of accountability, Sister Shazia and brother here, is this little child with the sticky eyes would like to become one day a doctor like you or a professor or a president of the country. Yes, Jazakallah uh, khairan so much for that, uh, Dr. Hani. And uh, I must say, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in studio with us uh, this morning. And uh, Allah accept, Allah reward your efforts. All of us. And uh, all our efforts, inshallah. And uh, once again, we do appreciate you taking time, coming out and talking with That's us. That's my duty. Inshallah. I should be accountable to you. I mean, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa rahmatullah. The deeds most loved by Allah.